In the first video, we talked about the counting principles of multiplication and addition, and I also told you about these two shortcuts which can be very useful for solving counting problems. Today, I would like to add to that by talking about overcounting. So overcounting is when you count too many things, like more than you wanted, and it can sound like it was a mistake when I say it like that. But actually, overcounting is a strategy, and there are two types of overcounting that I want to mention. So the first type is subtraction, when you've counted some things that you did not want to count. And we've actually already seen an example of this in the first video, when we were doing this problem about the people who wanted to sit down in the chairs. First, we counted the number of ways that A and B could sit together, but then we wanted, as well as A and B being together, we also wanted C and D to be separate. And the way that we did that was we counted all of the ways that A and B could sit together, and then we subtracted from the ways in which A and B are together, but C and D are also together, which are the things that we don't want. So we subtracted that. We used overcounting as a strategy. So instead of counting the things that we actually wanted, which was C and D had to be separate, we counted the total number of ways for the people to sit down and then we subtracted the things that we did not want because when we counted the total number of ways, that includes some things that we don't want, which are the ways for them to sit with C and D together. So then we subtracted that. We used an overcounting in which we counted more than we needed and then we subtracted the ones that we did not need. But there is a second type of overcounting that I also want to mention, and that is division. And that is when you didn't count any things that you didn't want to count, but you counted all the things that you wanted multiple times. So for example, everything was counted twice or everything was counted three times. So in that case, you're going to finish your strategy by dividing by two or by dividing by three. Because if everybody was counted twice, then you're getting twice the number of actual things that you want, right? And you fix that by dividing by two. And that kind of strategy is very common, for example, in problems about anagrams. An anagram is when you take a word and you scramble the letters. So the same letters, but you put them in a different order. So for example, how many anagrams are there of the word watch? Well, watch has five letters and you want to put them in different orders. Say this, for example. Uh, so how many different ways can we put five things in order is already one of our shortcuts. So the answer here is going to be five factorial. But there are more interesting examples. Uh, and let's use the word anagram itself. It has seven letters. But how many different anagrams can you make with these letters is not seven factorial. Because seven factorial is the number of ways to put seven things in order. But these seven things are not all distinguishable from each other. There are three of them which are the same. So when you think of it as seven factorial, uh, you have to think that you are taking all of those seven things and putting them in different orders as if those three A's were different things. For example, if they were different colors, they are not, but the factorial doesn't know that. That's the point of the strategy. So you have to do something else because if you just use the seven factorial, he's going to think that the seven things are different. So the reason why I'm painting my letters is not because I want them to be painted. It's because I'm looking at this from the point of view of the seven factorial. So they look different to me now. And the seven factorial also thinks that they are different. So I am just trying to see things as what is happening when I say seven factorial. So for example, the original word anagram, I have already written it down in two different ways, two ways that the seven factorial thinks are different. But we, as the people asking the question, should be colorblind. We don't see the difference between those two words. And of course, those are not the only two words that are going to be indistinguishable for us, but I don't want to write them all down. And this permutation is also not the only one that is going to be counted in a repeated way. All of them are because all of them have the three A's. The factorial is not removing any letters. Uh, he's just switching the order. So all of the anagrams are going to have three A's. So all of them are going to appear a multiple amount of times in the counting that the seven factorial is doing. I'm only drawing two of each, but how many are there? The two that I drew in both pairs of words here were red, green, blue and blue, red, green. But those are not the only two. 
in how many different ways can we put three colors in order? That's three factorial, which is equal to six. So every single anagram that we care about is being counted six different times by the seven factorial. So that is exactly the type of case for division over counting because everybody was counted the same number of times. Every anagram that we care about was counted six times. So the way to figure out the actual number of anagrams is to take the seven factorial and divide by six. And in this way, you can find a number of different anagrams for any word. So let's take pineapple, which is an interesting one. It has nine letters altogether, but out of those nine letters, uh, three of them are P's. So I am painting them different colors for us to remember that that's the way that the nine factorial is going to see them. And it also has two E's, which I have painted orange and purple. So the nine factorial doesn't see that those letters are supposed to be the same. They each are just their own thing. Uh, but we know that the three P's, regardless of color, are the same thing. So each anagram of pineapple is being counted six times because of that three factorial of the three P's being put in different orders. And also divided by two because the E's can be first orange and then purple, as it is in this example, or they can be the other way around. So every single anagram is also being counted twice because of the E's. So is, in the end, every anagram being counted 12 times? Well, yes, because that is the product principle. You have to choose the order of the P's in one of six ways and the order of the E's in one of two ways. So that's six times two. So anagrams are the most common example where the division over counting strategy is going to be used, but it's obviously not the only one. So here's a different question, and it's going to be a good example of how you have to be careful with this, because the division over counting does require everybody to be counted the same number of times, multiple number of times, okay? It has to be everybody. So when we think of domino pieces, what do they look like? They are a little rectangle with a division in the middle, and we have a number of dots on one side and a number of dots on the other side, which may or may not be the same number. And for the people who like to ask if the order matters, uh, just go back and think of the concrete things. Uh, the piece is in your hand. Is it a different piece if you turn it around? Are there two pieces in a domino box, one with three, four, and another one with four, three? There just isn't. That's just the way that these things exist in the world. So when I talk about domino pieces, yes, this is the same piece as this, which is also the same piece as this one. Uh, we are not talking about numbers in a vacuum. These are domino pieces that we are talking about. They are concrete things. Um, so as I said, the numbers may or may not be the same. So this is also a valid domino piece. And the biggest number should be the six. The smallest number is the zero though. So you can have seven different choices for the first number and seven different choices for the second number as well. It's not one of those kind of situations where after you choose the first one out of seven, then you can't pick it again. So the next one will be six possibilities. No, because you can repeat the number, okay? So it's seven times seven, 49. But there was an overcount that happened here because I was just saying that three, four and four, three are the same piece. But when I say seven times seven, the seven doesn't know that. So it is counting three, four and four, three as different things. It's also counting six, zero and zero, six as different things, one, two and two, one. So uh, you get the initial feeling that everybody's being counted twice. So by the division over counting strategy, you're supposed to divide by two. However, 49 divided by two is 24.5, which is a number that doesn't make sense. How many domino pieces are there? 24 and a half? No, I don't think so. So what's happening here is that not everybody is being counted twice. The pieces that have the same number on both sides are not being counted twice. There isn't two, two, and then another two, two in the same way as there is a three, four, and a four, three to be counted separately. 
the two two is really only counted once so not all of the dominoes are being counted twice which is why you're not just going to divide by two this is what you do when everybody was counted twice so what you have to do in this example is divide in two cases case one is going to be different numbers and case two is going to be same number so the same number, there's only seven pieces in that way. There's 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, and so on. Uh, the other 42 are situations in which that 7 times 7 picked different numbers, like 3, 4. And out of those 42, now everybody is being counted twice because there is no 3, 3 now. There's only 3, 4, and 4, 3. So 42, we should divide that by 2 because everybody was being counted twice. So that gives me 21. We add the two cases because that's addition principle. And that is the answer. There are 28 different domino pieces.